ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the yeah, here, July 11th Placer County Planning Commission meeting. We'll begin with a salute to the flag, if you will join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If we could have the roll call. Here. 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 Present. Now, we'll fortunately have a report from our planning director or his able assistant, as we say. Okay, so upcoming board meetings, July 25th. I think I mentioned this to you before. Uh, will be a Tahoe meeting. We'll be at the resort at Squaw Creek, and at that meeting, we'll have the appeal of the Forest Flyer Project and an update to the Tahoe Basin Community Plan. Um, upcoming Planning Commission meetings: uh, the, the July 25th meeting is still on. Uh, it is going to have the subdivision modification for the Rancho Del Oro project and another community center workshop. On August 8th, we don't have any items at this point. On August 22nd, uh, we're looking at tentatively the uh, temporary use permit that I mentioned last time on the community resources uh, recovery. That's the uh, overnight drug rehabilitation uh, facility off of Shale Ridge here in Auburn. And the uh, recommendation by the Planning Commission on the housing element to the board. So we'll be considering that. So that's kind of the status of upcoming uh, meetings. Any questions at this point? Yeah. <clears throat> the next meeting for the board is up at Tahoe, but not for us. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we're tentatively looking for sometime in September to have a Planning Commission meeting up in, in Tahoe. You know, I was thinking maybe, maybe there might be snow in September, but I kind of doubt. It. I'm, I'm really trying to be considerate of, of Richard here. You know, for the, for those of you who didn't know, I think my second planning commission two years ago, we went up to Tahoe. It was, I guess, in February, and we almost didn't make it back. I mean, in a sense, we, we, it was a safe trip because you were driving, Paul, but we were delayed. What's three hours there at the service station, and only because. We knew somebody in Caltrans that we went through and encountered snow plows up on the mountain. <laughs> but that was an exciting day. Yeah. I said, is this the way it always is? <laughs> Every time we go to Tahoe, right? We prayed for that weather. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I was happy for the skiers, but I didn't have my skis because I don't ski. Well, we can do something about that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Paul. All righty. Oh, All right. Um, at this point, I'll open the meeting to anyone from the public who should like to make comment on any items not on the agenda today. And seeing no one, I'll pass on that and go to actually ask for an update on the planning application and activities. So, Paul, thank you. Again. Thank you again. Uh, okay, so um, Michael asked me to give the Planning Commission a, a little bit of an update of, of the projects that you know are currently in the mix uh, that will be either coming to you in the, in the future at an upcoming meeting or projects that are, you know, just in the initial stages of pre-development. Uh, some of them are projects that are, have already been considered by your commission and, and are about ready to construct. So, um, so with that, go on to the next one. Okay, so Placer Vineyards. Uh, this is the project was considered by the commission and approved by the board in, in 2007. And uh, uh, initially when it was approved in 2007, it's, it was you know 5,230 acres. It had 274 uh, acres of commercial, 14,132 units. A, no, a number of acres in uh, public, quasi-public uses. 
and 920 acres in parks and open space. So the question is, what's going on? What's happening now? Um, they've got approval, uh, litigation's been settled, uh, they're currently processing their uh, environmental impact statement for the, the core permit. Um, so what's going, going on at this point? Uh, well, it's, it's a very expensive project. So uh, the applicants are, the developers group are uh, in uh, with the county and we're reviewing the public facilities financing plan, looking at where, where there could be you know, uh, cost savings there. And some, some of the areas are the amount of park acreage. When they originally, uh, the project was originally approved, it was they overparked the site. So they're looking at reducing some of the park acreage site. Still within the general plan, but reducing that down as well as some trails and things of that sort. Um, we've also uh, received um, individual requests from uh, property owners. So there's a number of property owners in this development, around 20, 21, 22. Um, one of the requests is for the town center property, and that's this pro parcel 12A, which is about, in this area, it's about 200 acres. And they're looking at doing um, a redesign of the project, um, reducing the high density residential to more medium density, uh, some of the, the land use, the government center land use designation, uh, the rec center land use designation that's in the town center is going to be relocated to, to the park sites that are there. So it's a, again some uh, some cost savings that they're they're looking at. Uh, some of the roads are going to be redesigned um, in in that one property. Also, we've had communications with this property owner. This is um, at the corner of Baseline and Watt Avenue. This is Watt Avenue right here, and they're looking at going from you know commercial low density high density some park space to mostly power center uh, designation so they're looking at changing that land use designation it'll be a specific plan amendment uh, it'll come before the plan, uh, planning commission and onto the board uh, so that's that's being considered uh, at this time um, this is baseline road right here yeah here's the here's the plaster uh, Sacramento County line and then Watt Avenue. Um, another consideration is, is this parcel right here, parcel 1A, uh, is mostly all low density residential and it does have a, uh, a de designation of a, a active adult communities or age restriction requirement. Uh, we've had recent discussions about maybe uh, them coming in and changing that to just conventional housing. A couple other pro projects that we're working on. Hey, Paul? Yes. Uh, I guess just kind of a reaction. It kind of defeats the purpose of, this, of the Pacific plan. If you go through and do the zoning, all the zoning with the Pacific plan, and then I guess every, all these folks will be coming back to the Planning Commission now with the changes that really are different than what the overall vision was. Right, and, and I think uh, the response to that is that back in, you know, prior, it was approved in 2007, and, you know, we were in, you know, in an entirely different place during that time than we are today. Mm -hmm. And what may have worked back in 2007 does not work today. Okay. Um, and there's, there are different demands and pressures and mar marketing issues. So I think the, the, the owners group are trying to best adjust to that. So I have a feeling there will be several um, changes. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about Riolo Vineyards, which is another specific plan that we've just recently had a pre-development meeting. Yeah. Well, how do you keep the overall context where you have the individual, I mean, it's kind of being parceled out now. And so the overall concept, is there still a, a look at, at that? That's something that the, the staff will, will need to look at. I mean, that's very important to, you know, when we originally did this specific plan, there was, there was different, you know, there was this design and this, this theme and, and it, we looked at it all together. And when the individual property owners come in, um, the staff will have to keep that into consideration and try to, you know, best adjust to maintain the overall um, design and, and theme of the, the specific plan. 
So that'll, that'll be, be important when it comes to the commission to right. Uh, right. have that clear, I guess, when we do look at individual parcels. Sure, yeah. sure. And I'd also like to add to it that it would help the planning commission to see when anything is, as you're mentioning, change it to what I would consider the public, like the park and the uh, other applications. What does the owner's quid pro quo for what the public is giving up for parks what are they giving up as well, not just getting more? So that uh, direct staff to see that there's like a, a trade-off, as Richard's pointing out. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I just have a follow-up comment. I agree with Richard and Chairman. It's from your description here, there's changes all over that specific plan, so I can see just a, another piecemeal approach instead of a specific plan. My concept, being from Roseville, specific plan, doesn't mean it isn't changed because so they have modified Pacific plans in Rosal, but they've been, in my opinion, minor changes like uh, moving maybe a little high density from one location to another to make it a little, little, a little better, whatever. But this doesn't sound that way. It sounds like it's coming in non-specific plan way, and if they're going to be making that many changes, then they might throw out the specific plan and start over again. That, that, that's my opinion. That's a concern of mine because. I know that thing went through a ton of uh, hearings before, and the whole blueprint I issue came up and all that good stuff, but I can just see the, them coming to us on a piecemeal basis and also to staff on a piecemeal basis, and it isn't fair to staff or us or even the county to do it that way. So I'd be real interested to see what's going on As it's forward. Going on. Yeah. Well, well, we'll keep that in mind when we're, we're looking at these applications and bringing those forward. Some other projects that we're working on, uh, the uh, Hidden Crossing project, which has uh, uh, been through a number of name changes. Hidden Crossing is right here in, in this area uh, at the corner of PFE and, and Wallarga. Uh, it's a uh, 78 lot subdivision. It's already been approved. Um, they're about ready to issue improvement plans on that project. So it's one of those that's already been considered and is, is moving forward. Uh, right next to it, right at the very corner of, of uh, PFE and Wallagra is this uh, new project that we just had a, a pre-development on, and that's the Morgan Knowles project right, right there. And that'll be a, a subdivision that'll be coming in front of the Planning Commission eventually. Uh, Winding Creek is a, another project that um, uh, has a previous approval. Uh, we just had another pre-development with them where they're uh, asking to increase the number of lots from I think 11 to, to 20. Riolo Vineyards, uh, just gonna touch on that. Uh, let me show you. Project site was 526 acres, um, 933 dwelling units, uh, 7.5 acres of commercial, some agricultural, 91 acres. Uh, those are larger parcels, 10 acre parcels. Um, some open space and quasi-public um, uh, zoning there. And we just recently had a pre-development meeting, like yesterday, uh, where they're asking to change the, uh, on this parcel right here, uh, from high-density residential to, to commercial. They're asking to, there was originally a, a parallel road that went through the project that kind of paralleled PFE, they're, they're redesigning that to eliminate that property, uh, that, that road access. Uh, they're changing some of the agricultural 10-acre minimum sites to just agriculture, so they'll, they'll have this. I think the idea here is to have um, agricultural activities out in this, in this area rather than large 10-acre parcels. So uh, I think this would be an idea of where people within the community can have agricultural activities, community gardens, things like that, that that's what they're looking at there. So something that's... J.C. Paul? Yes. Just a question looking at the uh, map. Uh, you know, by eliminating some of these through roads, are they in essence creating cul-de-sac subdivisions or are they still going to have I think roads that have... Uh, more than one, one way in and out. Yeah, and I think what they, they are doing, I, th I don't believe this road here uh, was initially there with the initial approval off of PFE, so they're, they're trying to adjust for that. 
uh, issue of, of not having the parallel road coming through there. So they'll have cul-de-sac subdivisions? Uh, that, you know, I'd have to look as far as the individual designs. I'm not, I'm not sure I can't respond to that at this point. I know like the one in the, uh, the lower right-hand uh, corner, when that came before the commission, uh, there was, at least in my mind, a, a problem with it because you know, there's one way in and one way out, and they have a lot of streets with uh, dead ends on them. A lot of, I mean, uh, a lot of homes in there. They did have a, a gated way out, I guess. But at any rate, at that time, part of the discussion was that there would be a through road mm -hmm. that connected up, and so it was really not a. It wasn't going to be a forever type solution. This was just a temporary solution. So right. At any rate, uh, I'm sure that. Surely would say that would be something to really look at so that we don't sure, sure. get too many houses uh, built behind a, a one way in, one way out situation well, where, uh, you know, there's hopefully the fire department would uh, right. ask some questions. And, and uh, they definitely will have, uh, you know, be notified and, and ask for comments as well as our, our requirements with, you know, uh, the engineering and surveying department regarding lengths of, of roads. So we'll, we'll definitely look at that. Uh, question here. Oh, well, my comment was more, very much like Richard's. I, I think you, you'll be creating three separate subdivisions is what it amounts to instead of having one project with interfacing bike trails and roadways and stuff. You're going to load up PFE with p people coming out, going along for a ways and going in and coming out and going down a little further and going in. I think we need to look real hard at that. At the very least, you need to have a walking, biking mm -hmm. arterial. I believe, as I remember, and, and again, we just had the pre-development yesterday, there is going to be a, a single road going across here, right in this area. Although it's not showing it, I do remember a, a road connection or some type of connection between these two right here. If I had a really good phone, I could call Don and find out what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Denial? Yeah, because it, 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 it's, it's showing, and, and I'm, I guess my question is, why not in the whole planning process showing the major arterials, you know, the reliever roads and everything else? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it does look like three separate subdivisions, and I'm surprised that since it's all owned under one entity that they don't show, just like the specific plans, the, all the... <laughs> The major road connections, irregardless if the land's not developed. Sure, I'll, we'll make sure and pass that information along to the when yep. they when they, it, they come in for their application. So basically, if I'm reading the board right, we're directing staff to pay special attention to the traffic connectivity. and connectivity of the subdivision. Sure. Okay. Good. Okay. And then I have a question separate from that. They're asking to change uh, from residential to commercial in yes. the middle of the subdivision. Is that right? Yeah, over in, in this, this parcel right here. This was a high-density residential parcel, I believe. And now they're proposing commercial okay. right at that corner. Gotcha. Um, moving on to Granite Bay. Uh, this is a project that will be in front of the uh, commission on the 25th. Uh, the modification of the Rancho del Oro subdivision. Uh, like I said previously, they're asking for uh, a reduction in the right-of-way width, not the pavement width, but just the right-of-way width from, I believe, 40, which is the standard, to, to 28 feet. The, the pavement will still be um, the same, same, but the right-of-way is just uh, reduced. And there's some uh, individual um, grading on the site to make sure that the, the site drains better than it initially um, did when the project first came forward. So the commission will be looking at that at the next meeting. New project uh, we had a pre-development on, Rockland Meadows. This is, this is Interstate 80, Rockland Road, uh, Aguilar, 23 lot subdivision, um, 10,000 square foot minimum uh, lots. Uh, on it and uh, anyway we just had a pre-development and that project will be coming forward um, um, within the next six months or, or a year. 
Moving on, the Forest Hill projects, the Belcara uh, subdivision here off of Forest Hill Road. This is um, on the way to Forest Hill. Uh, this is a 39-lot uh, subdivision, um, 90 acres of open space. The total site is about 170 acres. Also within Forest Hill, this is the Wharton Market um, property. This is a vacant lot where they're proposing an 8,000 uh, square foot uh, dollar uh, market. It's a general mer merchandise store. Uh, we're currently going through an environmental review on that project. This one will this one uh, will just require a design review. Uh, it is going through environmental re review right now, so this one w will not be coming before the Planning Commission. In Auburn, uh, the Auburn Creekside project currently in environmental review. It's a here's here's Bell Road. This is uh, Target right here. So this is immediately to the north. Um, total of 93,000 square feet of uh, commercial retail mixed use, uh, potentially four different uh, buildings on this property. It's currently going through environmental review. Uh, requires a use permit. Will be. Uh, before the Planning Commission. Uh, Vian Enterprises, uh, that's a, uh, let me see how big this one is. This is another one that's going, has gone through environmental review and I believe will just require a, a design review. Uh, it's a, it's a 80,000 square foot uh, building. I think it's uh, composed of two actual buildings. Uh, these folks make uh, aircraft parts gears, they employ a lot of people currently, and with this new um, uh, expansion that they're proposing, they'll, they'll uh, have more, more folks employed, so it's a, a good project for the county. Uh, Costco, um, they have uh, submitted. There's a pre-development application um, that uh, we're in the process of looking at. Uh, this, I just grabbed the, uh, the, the site plan that they provided. Here's Willow Creek, Home Depot. This is the DeWitt Center here. And here's the outline of the, uh, the improvement. So. Where are you? Where? DeWitt. Nine Home Depot, yeah. How, how, how many acres is that? Uh, I have no idea. I don't think I have that information here. The senior center is right there. Okay. That's a senior. Yes, and they're and we're all. I think we're, everybody's working together to you know find a new home for, for them. Hey, come here with me. Timberline at Auburn uh, project that was uh, approved by the planning commission. Uh, we're currently in the process of looking at improvement plans for the first phase. Uh, here's, here's the overall site plan. The first phase, I believe, is some of these buildings here, and I believe these units. So that one is, could be getting started here this summer, uh, right across the street. Paul, Paul uh, and I noticed that little dotted line there. That's uh, some kind of uh, the Auburn aircraft uh, this is some kind, of, some kind of line for the Auburn Airport. I noticed that uh, Kathy had sent us the, some kind of a draft plan that changes a bunch of uses and stuff will, on, on the Auburn Airport plan. Mm -hmm. is, will that line be affected? Or the, any of the subdivision with height limits and stuff like that on that plan? I didn't take that careful a look at it, but he yeah, had a I lot of seen, colored pictures and stuff. Yeah, I haven't seen, seen the plan, but given that this is an, an approved project, okay. uh, it, it, it won't affect it. That I don't I don't have the answer to that. Okay. Not oh, right there, yeah. Um, but not all the way up. Okay, thank you. And thanks, Phil.
the, the airport um, land use plan, this project actually did go um, to the airport land use commission for comment during its environmental review. So it was reviewed under the current plan. And as Paul said, because it's an approved plan, it would be under the current plan. This project, the commission may also remember, was uh, litigated and was in the appeal phase. And the petitioners just a couple of weeks ago uh, decided to drop their appeal. So the litigation is finished. OK, going up the hill. Uh, Village at Squaw v Valley specific plan. So that project is currently in process. It consists of 1,275 uh, fractional ownerships. It's a recreational be uh, based all season resort um, and it includes commercial uses, retail uses, recreational, um, huge part of, of uh, Squaw Valley. Uh, processing the application. There is a project level uh, phase one component. Uh, we're currently going through environmental review. Uh, here's a, uh, I did get a, uh, a photo of the, uh, the model that's um, uh, located in, in the village there um, for folks to review. Uh, so that is, is currently a huge, big project currently going through the process. That'll be uh, before the Planning Commission as well as the board eventually. Where are they getting the water? <laughs> Good question. We're still working that out. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this is a, uh, a new pre-development application that came in. This is the uh, Squaw Valley Stables, um, uh, the Pavel property, uh, proposing to uh, change what's there now, the stables, the single family residence, and I believe it's uh, converted to eight, eight single family residential lots. Would that require rezoning? Uh, I don't believe so. It's a planned residential development, uh, so we'll have to go through an environmental review and it'll be in front of the planning commission because of that. Again, we just recently had a pre-development meeting, like a couple days ago. Last slide. Um, Martis Valley Opportunity, that's this project right here next to North Star. Uh, another very, very big project that the, the counties, it, it hasn't, um, they're, they're looking at the project description at this point, they're getting that together. This is where they're, they're taking the density that's over on, on this side of the mountain across 267, here's 267. Uh, there's a lot of density that's available over here. They're taking this and putting it into open space and taking some of the units, not all, over and putting them over here. So it involves a couple rezonings. It's a specific plan, uh, initial phases of the project, uh, and uh, it's looking, I think it's around 760 residential units, uh, uh, some acres of, of commercial, about six acres there, and uh, so that's a project, once again, that'll be in front of the Planning Commission eventually, but still, we're just in the initial phases of looking at that project. I should disclose, I met with those people and walked the site uh, some time ago, and there's the issue that I saw that needs to be resolved is that the, the boundary line between the Tahoe Basin and the Martis Valley, as it was outlined initially, may have been an error and that there's some of that property will, a, a large chunk of it will have beautiful views of the lake, yet it drains into the Marnus Valley. So uh, that line needs to be verified uh, before they get too far into the process and spend a lot of your time and money to, mm -hmm. because uh, it, it, it appeared from the drawings that they showed me that there, there was something desperately wrong with it, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. At any rate, I just want to acknowledge that I had seen it and I had met with him so that. So staff is directed as such. <laughs> uh, just lastly, just to let you know, the Martis Camp, um, <clears throat> big residential development. Um, this, that area of the county is um, kind of going gangbusters. I think uh, I heard from the chief building ins inspector that this summer alone will issue 60 
uh, single family residential building permits on in, within that project. So um, area where they're, they're developing, um, going gang, gangbusters. So with that, if you have Thank any you. questions, Thank I'll you. happy to answer those. Uh, Paul, on the Placer Ranch, is that now being processed through the city of Roseville? Uh, Placer Ranch uh, is not being processed through the city of Roseville. Uh, it was a, <clears throat> started out with the county right. years ago, then it went to the city of Roseville, and then it kind of just fell by the wayside. There has been some talk that maybe something might be coming back. To the county or to the city? I haven't heard where, but I think maybe the county. Okay. But haven't heard you more need than. To your choice, huh? <laughs> so who knows? But there's, there's something out there. All right. um, but haven't seen anything or nothing's been submitted at this point. Turkey Creek is still in the in the county. It's within the uh, village, uh, within village one of the villages specific plan. Um, I, you know that one's it it's is being processed through. It's being uh, processed through, through the Lincoln, county, isn't it? Yeah, and but there, it's been on hold or, or there's nothing's really happened on that for oh boy I'd say six to eight months. So um, I'm not too sure of what's what's going on with that between you know. I know we started out processing the, the project and are currently processing w within the county. Um, but it's kind of weird because it's at the densities that the specific plan in the city we're looking at. So it's, it's really. I, and, and the only reason I question it because actually I can't get involved in it because I back up, my property backs up on the uh, uh, Auburn Ravine against it and the high pressure sewer line coming from Auburn comes down and actually goes through my property mm. across to it. And, and I've, in the easement rights and everything negotiations, it's only been with the city of Lincoln. Mm -hmm. I've never dealt with anybody from the county and the engineer said, you know, it actually goes, goes through the Turkey Creek project and, there was a realignment because it was supposed to go um, touch the intersection of Sierra College Boulevard and stuff. And apparently they said, well, just take it down Virginia Town Road farther. Mm -hmm. And then it would be a shorter tie in if they, they crossed underneath uh, the ravine. And they didn't want to go on to the NID dam that's just down beyond my property, sort of mm -hmm. the edge of it. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I've I've seen things where hearings and all sorts of stuff. I deal, <laughs> dealing with the city, yeah. Again, so, you know, I haven't. You know, it's like I said. It started out, you know, and as as far as I know, it's still an application that's you know on file with uh, planning, and we're processing it. But it's been real quiet for you know six to eight months at least. Um, I know there were some discussions with the city of Lincoln about, you know, process, where to process it in the county, in the city. Because I guess all their services, you have know, to come sewer and everything, all services are from Lincoln. Sure. You sure. know, so. Yeah, it would make sense. I don't know. Uh, sewer services are going to be from Lincoln, too. Right, that's, that's where it comes Lincoln down. Yeah. I think the county is. They're the lead on the project. To, uh, Lincoln. Okay, well, is that the last question uh, concerning the uh, update? Good update. If so, thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is the uh, tentative subdivision map modification. Uh, Mr. Haas, I believe, will inform us of its situation presently. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this item is a request for a modification of, a, of an approved vesting tentative map and conditional use permit for Highlands 2, which is a residential subdivision uh, just um, below the mountain at North Star. Uh, it was approved originally with an overall Highlands EIR back in 2005, and this is uh, phase two of that project. So the applicants came to the county in April last year, April and May last year, with a proposal to reduce the overall density and convert some of the residential units from condominiums to townhomes and also from condominiums to single family residences. Overall reduction in density of about 130 units total. 
the applicant, uh, so originally we'd process this as, uh, as an initial, with an initial study showing that uh, we found that it was consistent with the EIR. And we had put this on a hearing date in, in November last year. At that time, the applicant requested a continuance to December. And then beyond that, another continuance to an open date in order to address some concerns that were expressed by, uh, by Vail Resorts. So the county process revisions to the project uh, that were following resubmittals by the applicant for the following several months, all the way up until May, June area. The item was then placed on an agenda for your commission on June 13th, which would have been heard up in Tahoe with two other Tahoe items. Both of those items, the uh, community plan update uh, was not ready to go forward and the other item turned out was uh, not, not, did not need to go to a hearing after all. So rather than have everyone drive up the hill, not a couple of you be up there, but everyone else drive up the hill for a single item, we decided to continue it to today. Then uh, on July 9th, we received a comment letter from um, Stoll Reeves, Greg Gatto with Stoll Reeves, he's attorney of Stoll Reeves, representing the Aspen Grove Owners Association. And a couple of the issues that he raises in the letter, we didn't quite get around to having a, a firm understanding of and couldn't give you a solid recommendation on. So we are at this point requesting yet one more small continuance. Uh, we think we can have an answer in probably a few days here for you, but we're just not quite ready to give it to you today. And we request that we continue this item to uh, either the 25th, which is your regularly scheduled hearing, and if we did that, it could be at 10:20, um, or if the applicant requests and you consider it, maybe a special hearing on the 18th of June. Uh, excuse me, of July, and that would be a 10:05. Uh, discussion. Uh, personally, I'd rather not have a special meeting, but uh, right, not a special. I've already made a. Anybody else? <laughs> We're going to talk about a continuance from staff. Well, I don't know what well, it's going to tell us. Yeah. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Telling with East West Partners, and um, um, we agree with uh, letting staff uh, move forward with continuing uh, the meeting to address uh, some concerns they have. Uh, so we're fine with that, and um, we, we do not feel the need to impose upon you to have a special meeting on the 18th as long as we can get this uh, resolved in a timely manner for the meeting on the 25th. So um, unless you guys want to have another meeting to have a meeting, um, we're fine with, with uh, um, continuing to the 25th. Thank you, Jim. How, how many items do we have on the 25th? I know, Paul, you went over it already, but uh, is there, can we accommodate something else? Sh sure. Uh, right now we have the Rancho Del Oro subdivision modification. Uh, that will be the first one. Uh, this would be the second one at 1020. And then the last item would be the uh, community, community center workshop. So, And that workshop, that's the last workshop yeah. for that, right? And right. I think the, the goal is, is the, on the community center is that th that would be the last uh, workshop. And then the staff would go out and prepare the zoning text amendment, an ordinance for your consideration. Uh, are you getting any letters of uh, objections to the other project that we're going to hear that day? The one in Granite Bay? Oh, 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 the one in Granite No, no. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay. Not at this point. <laughs> so, you heard do, I, do I hear a we, motion for a continuance from anybody? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll we'll second that. To the 25th at 10.30. So, so moved and seconded. Can we have a voice vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. I'd like, to ask, yeah, I'd like to ask staff a question. I'm going to keep my all this material here. Can your material just be sent out either electronically if it's a short memo or a, or you don't have to send the FedEx to my house, I guess is what I'm saying. Save the expense of that a little bit. Yeah, we anticipate any additional information is probably just going to be in errata to the staff report. Uh, it'll be a few pages long, but we could probably do that electronically without having to send out. Okay, thank you. I, I have a question. I have I have a question. What, uh, you know, on, on the letter, what is it specifically that need to verify or go over? Well, um, the issue of the, um, the court order is, is not an issue or question with us. It's clear that there's a court order out there. It may be stayed. We're not sure about that. That's not really what we're concerned about. 
Mr. Grotto also raises uh, potential violations of uh, county code ordinance uh, allowing for us to process applications while there is an ongoing violation. Um, so what we first want to uncover is, is there a violation out there that the county is aware of or has any uh, jurisdiction over in Aspen Grove, near the Aspen Grove, um, uh, the basin above Aspen Grove? And then the second issue is, if there is a violation, can we proceed with approving or recommending approval of an application, and can your uh, commission take action to approve an application while there's a, a potential pending violation? Okay. okay. Any other questions? Then I'm going to close this meeting. Could I jump up and just follow up that real quick? Um, I think, to be clear, the question is related to the village project and, and not necessarily Highlands, too. Right. One thing we've been able to determine up until this point is with the imposition, you'll likely see this in the errata, with the imposition of two new conditions of approval that require monitoring, a uh, five-year monitoring program for each set of improvement plans that comes in for Highlands, too. We are very confident that there will be no impact from the Highlands 2 project in terms of drainage on the downhill property at, um, just south of North Star Village. So the issue is not whether or not there's a violation with Highlands 2 and with this subdivision, but whether or not there's a violation on the adjacent property that would preclude, or the nearby property, that would preclude us from processing <coughs> other applications in the area. Questions? What's, can I have a question? Yes, sir. Everything that's coming in now via North Star in general is being challenged by this Home Homeowners Association. I thought that the county had done a study and determined that we were not in any way uh, involved in that issue and that that was a, that didn't include us and yet we keep every item now it seems to have a can tied on it for that. Uh, let me try and clarify. First of all, it's um, because this issue came up at North Star, for the North Star Flyer as well. The county's position, which we remain fast with, is that this is a third party civil lawsuit. It did not include the county, it did not name the county. Uh, therefore, the county is not bound by any decision or order of that court. However, um, it, what the county has looked at is whether anything in the order from the court provides evidence. Uh, that the county is duty bound to look out from two aspects. One is the one that Jerry mentioned, which is 1548. Um, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. Three, three aspects, one of which has already been looked at. Um, the Aspen Grove folks originally had uh, asserted that there was a violation of our zoning code. There's a provision in the zoning code that says if there's a violation on a property, you can't uh, process another application unless it's an application to cure that violation. That was the first issue that came up. Uh, Mr. Johnson issued an opinion last year uh, concluding there was no violation of the zoning code. The new issue that's been raised by Aspen Grove is relating to our, our grading and erosion ordinance. And that's the issue that staff has asked and Norster has graciously agreed to uh, give staff a little more time to look into that particular issue. So it's not the court order, but it's the evidence within the court order that the, the staff wants to take a step back, look at it, make a conclusion, because we assume that this issue will be raised with every discretionary project that comes forward. Um, and we believe it is good to have a clear direction and understanding on that point. The issue, other issue which Jerry mentioned uh, about these other conditions is the other issue we have to look at is from the CEQA standpoint. For every discretionary project that comes forward within uh, the North Star area, we have to look at it from the standpoint of um, is anything in the order new information of significant importance that would um, necessitate us to look at the environmental review for the new project in a different way or how are we going to deal with it? Um, that's actually quite honestly an easier process because as you know with each discretionary project we are required to comply with CEQA which requires that sort of step through process. So that we are dealing with and will continue to deal with on a, uh, a project by project basis. Um, but as Jerry mentioned, it's the 1548 and those issues that staff just wants to take a step back and be able to provide clear direction to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Okay. I think I better understand. It, will it ever get to the point where we have to file a suit against the homeowners to clear the 
roadway so we can move forward with the rest of the, our lives? I don't know how to answer that, but it would be something we would, uh, we would have to take to the board in closed session to consider um, in the future. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, if there are no further questions, comments, I'll bring this meeting to a close. Good job. Half the game, we didn't do anything.